we are continuing our interviews with the new assignees who have been assigned to overseas posts. We have with us Ambassador Ellsworth John, who formerly was in charge of the Regional Integration and Diaspora Unit. Well, as of now, I'm, I'm still the director of the You're Regional Integration director. and Diaspora Unit, but I'm the uh, ambassador to Cuba designate. Designate. And uh, what they're doing there in the process of going through the procedures, you know, uh, once a person has been identified for a particular diplomatic post, it has to go to service commission. For the recommendation is made by cabinet to service commission. Then it is sent to the governor general, who then signs off on the appointment um, to overseas diplomatic force. So this consultation, is it like a sort of a handing over? No, actually it is a consultation that is supposed to have been held every year by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for all of the, the overseas heads of missions. And this year it is coincidental that the that this is being held at the same time that the cabinet had decided to make some changes in terms of the, the persons in the overseas missions. Okay. So from what you've gotten from the consultation so far, um, what topics, if you can disclose, what topics have been discussed and what, what have you learned so far? Well, basically the, the, this, this particular consultation is, is focusing on the strategic um, direction going forward for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and its overseas missions and the approaches that we should be taking um, as we carry out our duties in the various missions. For myself in, in Cuba, we, we established an embassy there 11 years ago and this is my second time around as the, the ambassador to Cuba. Okay. While serving as the Ambassador and Permanent Representative in Washington um, to the United States and to the Organization of American States. I also served as the concurrent non-ambassador, uh, non-resident non -resident ambassador, ambassador to Cuba. And when the decision was taken 11 years ago to um, open an embassy in Havana, um. then um, His Excellency Dexter Rose became the, the ambassador and it's, it's, it's coincidental like I guess that I am now he's, he's taken over and you are taking I'm over. now taken over from from Ambassador Rose as the resident ambassador in Cuba and I must say that it is at a very exciting time because as you know the the relationship with Cuba and the United, States. United States in particular has seen some softening in recent times. We had a visit by President Obama, uh, first pre president in, in over 50 years mm -hmm. that, that has gone to, to Cuba. And so we expect that there will be some changes. So it is an, it is an exciting time as we, we try to observe what is, what is happening in, in Cuba and be in a position to assess how we can um, work with the Cuban government to all mutual benefits during this period of transition. Okay. I understand that the theme for this week is re-engineering economic growth and development in the 21st century through diplomacy. How, how does the work, or how will the work that you do, I think you alluded to it just now, to work to the mutual benefit of both countries, the, the work that diplomats do, the work that you will do and would have done in your previous post, how does that contribute to development in St. Vincent? And well, Canada? diplomats overseas don't operate in a vacuum. True. We have to, we have to operate within the framework of the priorities of the sending state, in this case St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Yes. As you know, there is an economic development plan that has been um, produced, I think it ends in 20... 25 and started in it's a 2015 to 25 or 2010 to 20, 20 25 you know and this is the bible basically in terms of how we approach our work and 
during the course of this week, some of what we do would be to look at what happens in what the program is from the various ministries mm -hmm. in terms of carrying out that economic development plan and how our roles overseas in the mission would feed into being able to, to implement that, that economic plan. I suppose, like maybe from meetings, after meetings, consultations, agendas would change, priorities would change as you know, as times change and so on. The, the, the structure and the framework for, for economic development is, is, is kind of, the, there are broad guidelines mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the document. And we, are, we have been meetings with various ministries starting tomorrow. And during the course of those meetings, we will get a sense as to how those ministries are taking the broad guidelines that are outlined in the document. I think there are five strategic areas. And they will take those broad outlines and how they are implementing them and how they see the overseas missions mm -hmm. fitting in to what they are doing. Because our, our agenda really is to support the domestic agenda and to ensure that there's benefit that will come to St. Vincent and the Beans. True. The construction of the Agal International Airport is a, a major, a major development project in St. Vincent and Grenadines. It is. And Cuba would have given its support among other countries. What type of impact or how do you think this would tie in to your work? Well, meeting people in the diaspora and of course you're meeting new people, some of whom might not know about St. Vincent. How does this tie in in the overall development? and promotion of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Well, it, it, makes, it makes our job easier. I, I recall, I, I spent seven years as the ambassador to the United States previously. And when you speak to potential investors, the first thing they would ask you is, you know, about travel, transport, transport and communications. Now, our communication has been pretty good with um, Cable and wireless at the time, line now, and the various different um, technology that we have available to us. The question, the big question for them has been transportation. Transportation, yes. And now that the international airport is, is coming on stream, and the persons who have come and visited have seen the advances that have been made in terms of finalizing that project, there is a lot of interest and enthusiasm for foreign direct investment in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I mean, I would be bold enough to say that I think St. Vincent and the Grenadines is going to be the next frontier for development because of the, to some extent, mm -hmm. to the international airport that we, we have here and the potential that it has for allowing St. Vincent to be a final destination for persons, but only a gateway mm -hmm. to other destinations. The kinds of contacts that we have had with countries in Latin America, um, be it through our involvement in ALBA, SICA, OAS, and the close ties that we've had with Cuba, Venezuela, for example, and the growing um, links that we've mm -hmm. had with, with some of the others provide a really good opportunity for St. Vincent and the to be a gateway to Latin America. And it's one of the things that I will be exploring with the authorities and the people in Cuba. Um, the ability to use St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a tourism destination, especially given the contribution that they have made mm -hmm. um, to our international airport. So from your past experience of being in Cuba, even though it was a non-resident right. um, situation, what are you looking forward to? What do you love about Cuba? Oh, Cuba is a great place. It was, um, the culture of Cuba is very rich and looking forward to, to learning something from, from that. One of my pet projects, you know, initiatives that I, I tried to advance um, previously, because at the time I was non-resident to Cuba, I was also non-resident to Venezuela and Mexico. And I tried to put together a program, a cultural program for teaching music to students in our school so that we could have a really good youth orchestra coming out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And knowing how culturally rich Cuba is, it is one of the areas that I will be hoping to, to
to do some promotion in to see how they can assist us culturally. Parents and Vincent Venin is to advance among our youth a love and appreciation for music of different types. Mm -hmm. That's good. That sounds like a good idea. So Thank you. If you don't have, you're welcome. If you don't have any final comments. Well, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to the, this, this new experience. Um, it's been nine years since I've been ambassador to CARICOM and, and OECS. And so it's going to be an interesting change for me. As you know, it is always good to refresh. And having been now in the diplomatic service for over 20 years, um, this is going to be, being resident in Cuba, I think it's going to be an enriching experience for me. And hopefully, I'll be able to use that experience to the benefit of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Thank you. Thank All you very much. All the best to you, and enjoy Cuba. Thank you.